Everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm sorry I'm a few minutes behind. It's 8.06 actually, and I said 8 o'clock. My phone has been a little stupid on me because uh, I, I had an update that actually came in and I hadn't shut my phone off. You know how the mess is. Anyway, we are up and running now, so um, we're going to be uh, answering any questions. The, the video I did the other day about uh, change of heart and stuff like that, I had a lot of people peaking curiosity. How's it going, Sean? Thanks for joining, buddy. I appreciate you. I'm sorry. Give me one second here. I want to get my big screen up and running so I can see your comments real easy. And um, so the the um, thing about this video, so right here is where we're going to be our, our things are. Nice. Thanks for joining, T60. I appreciate it. So what we're going to be doing here is answering a bunch of questions that... Um, people had the other day about the point system and stuff like that this gentleman here is from uh uh thanks jared i appreciate that buddy as always so uh again this gentleman here is ben boat right he is uh you guys seen all the description that i gave him my little post the other day he's uh 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 go ahead just tell him what you, you know are. i wear a lot of hats my name's ben boat i wear a lot of hats i got my favorite one on today because i'm a big time atlanta braves fan born and raised in atlanta georgia so I'm uh, having fun with that. Uh, happy to be here with Ruben. Uh, we're going to uh, unpack some things that we talked about earlier that he did about our new point system, uh, how we're paying employee installers. So just want to unpack that and uh, let you guys know what's going on there. And uh, we got a little trick of the trade that we're going to share tonight as well. That's going to be great. Yeah. So uh, the other day, a lot of people was asking how the point system worked and how do you actually earn points and stuff like that. You want to just take off telling us about how you accumulate points and how it is. You don't have to give no specific numbers because we know the uh, hourly rate and all that stuff varies all over the Absolutely. United States. So just give an average ballpark like you did maybe at the demonstration up there. And that way just people can see how you accumulate points and stuff like that. that okay. Would be great. Uh, can I give a little backdrop on this, how it all got go, started? Go so, right uh, you know, I met Ruben about a year ago. Uh, I was looking online. I train a lot of people and I like to find things that, uh, you know, I can help me uh, visually, give me a visual aid to train my team with. And uh, I found Ruben's uh, site, and I usually don't do anything with YouTube or anything like that for information about flooring. I uh, usually it's got to be branded for me to want to put it out there, like by uh, Armstrong or yeah, there's a great brand, <laughs> right? By Armstrong or Shaw or, or one of the big brands out there. Uh, but I found exception in what um, what Ruben was doing. Uh, just some great stuff, sharing tips. Uh, and I've been about sharing tips with installers for over 30 years. Uh, he mentioned CFI. We just had a great convention down in Texas. Uh, and that's where he saw a seminar that I was doing. Uh, I work for a company that services big boxes and uh, big box stores. And um, we needed more installers. There's just not enough installers out there. And that's another reason I love Ruben's channel because he's kind of introducing the world to floor covering. Uh, and maybe there's some young people out there who might be inter interested. So typically there's a lot of subcontractors in the South. The union has people that work for them by the hour. And there's a lot of guys out there that work by the hour. And I say guys, ladies too. And uh, so we opened up in California. We wanted to start that employee model, um, but we wanted to do it a little bit different. We still wanted the employee installer to have the same motivation as a subcontractor. So a subcontractor, the more they make, uh, is depending on how many yards or square feet they do. Uh, so what we did is we offered a base salary and a point system that they could increase their earnings every week. So that's how it all started. Um, it's really pretty simple when you break it down. Uh, you get points. Everybody's pretty familiar with line items or getting paid for what you do. You may get paid so much per step, so much per square feet, so much for take up, haul away. Everybody in the industry is familiar with that. So what we did is we attached points versus dollars, and then we have a baseline pay. We use an example of ten dollars, but I can't. Uh, I don't want. I, I really want to emphasize that you know how much that base pay um, is just an example because there are markets out there where minimum wage may be fifteen dollars an hour, and each company is going to be different. Each market is going to be different. So we use ten because it's a, a nice round number. So. Uh, it works like this. If you're an installer, let's say you're a subcontractor and you convert over and you want to be a 
um, employee installer. Well, we're going to buy the truck, we're going to buy the tools, we're going to buy the supplies, uh, we're going to make sure you're working all the time, you know, 40 hours a week plus, uh, more, more like plus than not, uh, 50, 60 if you want it. <laughs> so overtime is definitely available. Uh, people in the flooring business understand that. So uh, let's say it's 10 bucks an hour and the baseline is 300 points. And what we're trying to determine is how many points an installer can do for an hour or per hour. And it's only the amount of time that they're working. We back out the, the hours it takes to drive there. We back out lunch. We back out all of those things. And we're just simply focused on the amount of time it takes to do each individual task or all the tasks collectively, rather. And then we're going to divide that by the, the, the points are going to be divided by the number of hours it took. So if you made 10,000 if you made 10,000 points in a day and it took you 10 hours, well, that's a thousand points per hour. Can I, right? can I say something real yes, quick? Yes, sir. What, what is, you, um, you're talking the points and stuff like that. I'm not quite getting exactly um, what the points uh, are accumulated from. You said something earlier about um, Line uh, items. Yeah. like steps, uh, furniture and stuff like that. Yes. Each step is a point. Each each different process, moving furniture, Absolutely. tear out and stuff like that, that is all accumulating points? And that's all accumulating points. Okay. Everything, anything that might make a job more difficult or elongate how, how long it takes to do it, we add points to it. Take up extra points, haul away extra points, install extra points. Perfect. You got it? Perfect. Okay. So just like if you were running your own business and had a subcontractor where you charge for uh, all the little details, same things works with the point system. The per hour is, uh, is a baseline and then so let's say we target 300 points per hour and that gets you making the baseline of 10 bucks an hour so if you end up making 900 points an hour so that's triple the 300 now you're going to triple your baseline which will be 30 bucks an hour and then it rolls into like all week long you collect all your points and then it rolls into overtime so you might think, well, they're just going to pay us overtime on the on the base rate, ten bucks an hour. So I'm going to be making fifteen. No, no, no. Contraire. We're going to make sure that you're paid on the thirty bucks an hour. So if you're making a point average of thirty bucks an hour, you go into overtime. Now you're at time and a half at forty five bucks an hour. So that's kind of how it works. That's based on ten. Do that multiplication the same way if it's 12, if it's 15, if it's whatever it is, whatever you negotiate, you know, depending on your experience. So we're not here today to set prices. That's not what we're talking about. This is ex just an example at 10 bucks an hour, but that's how it works. So, you know, typically an hourly employee, they get so much, you know, what drives them to, 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 to make more or to do more or, or gives them the ability to earn more, this system does that. So that's what, uh, we've introduced out there to CFI and uh, you know at CFI Ruben asked if I would come uh, unpack that a little bit more for you guys tonight. So uh, as, there's a lot of questions coming in right now. Let's do I, it. I do want to uh, go ahead and jump to some questions. If you guys uh, think you guys got that kind of clear I'm going to scroll up here and we're going to get to the top of our questions and just work our way down here. Sure. Uh, anything that people has asked here uh, Christian Wilson said do you know go ahead and read that do you do you know the CFI company that works in Home Depot in Kentucky, Ohio? They kind of work like this. Absolutely a great company. Uh, they did the same thing we did. There's, what I haven't told you yet is there's a training program that goes along with this. So if, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell the world right now, there's a word that I don't like in our industry. It's called a helper. Uh, it's me personally. Uh, there's a few out there that agree with me. I don't like the word helper. Who wants a job being a helper? Uh, so the um, the um, what I'm trying to say is the unions they have apprentice great word but you know that's the unions word and that's part of their graduating system so uh, we adopted at my company the word associate installer because that guy helping the main installer the lead guy he's doing he's he's working hard if he's you know earning his keep he's working yep. hard just like the lead guy is Absolutely. so we want to give him a little bit of respect and help him grow I like associate installer love to start a movement get that movement out there um, hopefully we can invite more young people into the trade by wanting to be an associate installer but back to that you said CFI great company uh, yes. that's different than the CFI the organization um, they are a big box service provider just like the company that I work for at Romanoff uh, CFI is great people they got a great training program they are probably doing something similar to that 
Sean Muller saying right there, where do I get more in, where do I get more info on this? And is it in every state? Man, we are in 50 cities. We're not in every state. We're kind of, uh, our particular company, uh, who we spent lots of dollars in and rolling this out and getting it. We don't, we don't even offer employee option in every market. We do in California, Washington. I've got an opportunity in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, if you're interested. Uh, we're not everywhere, but you can check with our online at uh, Romanoff dash floors.com is one you may check with cfi again that's a that's a great company too uh these are big box service provider but you know um you've got other people looking into it to do that does lowe's work um my buddy dave garden with uh uh i think uh he's out of uh detroit michigan sorry i can't remember his name but great guy too he's looking at the system as well uh, we want to invite everybody to take a look at it, see if you like it, see if it's something that uh, you feel like you can make a wage at. Let me add too, when you're an employee, it comes with other things like health insurance, 401k, provide the truck, provide the gas, everything. Um, and, and you can grow into management. You know, uh, I started out my career as a flooring installer. I'm in management now, have been going on 26 years. Um, and uh, you know, I started out as a flooring installer. So this is a great, path to that not only that let's say that associate installer formerly known as a helper comes and joins this program we actually track their progress you know everybody thinks three four years for somebody to learn how to be a lead installer that's nonsense um, if, if we track their progress hey they know how to do tax strip hey they know how to do pad hey now they can trim a seam they know how to row cut they know how to make a seam they know how to do steps that's if good. you track that if you track that it really only takes about a year, year and a half for somebody who really wants to be a lead installer. That's great, I really like that. I wanna give a shout out right now. Thank you again, Gold Coast Flooring and uh, Jared Hawkins. You guys are absolutely amazing. I really do appreciate your support on this channel. Like I said last night, everything from the channel goes to the channel. So you guys are definitely making help, helping make this channel great, okay? Uh, Jared Hawkins also said right here, and you pay for the helper as well, is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, the helper's paid, his insurance is paid, everything, man, When you know, uh, think about it like a rock star, right? They got people that manage their business so they can go out and be a rock star. That's what we do, man. We, we, we put it together so that the person with the skills can go out and get paid just for their skills. We'll take care of all the back end work, the taxes, all that, that all comes out. Yeah, get ready for that. Everything I'm talking about is pre-tax, guys. We're paying Uncle Sam no matter what. So uh, be prepared for that. That is something that subcontractors have a challenge with. I'm gonna answer Anthony there. Anthony okay. Warwick is at our Huntsville location. Man, that guy is an awesome installer. Thank you for uh, tuning in tonight, Anthony. Yes, thank it's good you, good to sir. see you, buddy. Uh, I've seen a couple more right down here. Uh, uh, let's see here. What about Texas? Is there a, is there a Romanoff in Texas? There is not currently, but like I said, we put this system out there and other service providers for big box are looking at it. And I, I say big box, but just people in the floor covering. CFI allowed us to do a class, and I'm talking this time about CFI, the, uh, the nonprofit organization that uh, comes together to train floor covering installers. Um, is in Texas, uh, we, had a, we had a seminar that I, that's the one he went to, that Ruben went to. And there were a lot of people out there that are, that are gonna be looking at this system. So uh, right now, uh, Romanoff has it. Like I said, we're in 50, I think 50 or 51 cities across the country. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. And right now, I wanna give a shout out to the real Cody. Dude, you're amazing, I appreciate it, buddy. That's twice you've offered to do that. Thank you so much. Uh, what about Georgia? Sean Muller is asking if there's a Romanoff in Georgia. There is. We're in. Uh, that is actually our hub. We are out of Smyrna, Georgia, or really just the peripheral of Atlanta. So that's where I came from. So when you see the Atlanta Braves hat on, that's not Alabama, folks. Love Alabama, no offense, uh, but that's uh, that's where I'm from. So uh, happy to uh, have you come by, take a look, there. But I, I, I want to make sure um, that for this channel that we stay focused on really what it's all about. I'm really not here to plug Romanoff or, or Big Box or anybody, anything like that. I'm here because I saw Ruben sharing information with other installers, not charging anybody. And that's what CFI, the organization, has been about forever. And I've been fortunate that the people I've worked for have allowed me to uh, stay participating in that 
organization for over 25 years now. I joined them 25 years ago when I was installing, and I've been a part of that throughout my management career. I've introduced guys to it. So, uh, listen, there are great installers out there that have never been certified. Absolutely, I found one right here. His name's Ruben. Um, you know, and there's another one uh, that I was talking to just a minute ago. Anthony. Anthony, that's right. Ant, Mr. Warwick out of Huntsville. Great installer, may not have ever been certified. Certif go, going to CFI is really just going, having another group of people that do what you do, recognize that you have these skills. And it also can give the consumer um, notification that you care enough to go get trained. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what CFI is all about. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nick. That just popped up right there. A uh, $100, um, $100 donation or a super chat. You are the man, Daniel Sherman. I really appreciate your super chat. You guys are absolutely awesome. Come on, Cody. He's calling you out there, homie. <laughs> Came back out. You called him out. Now he's calling you out. Um, let's see right here. I've seen another one here. Somebody was asking a question about... Uh, uh, he said, I have a LVP question. He said, after... Six months, my LVT flooring was installed. It buckled and separated. What caused that? If it's buckling, um, there's a good chance that it's tight against something and it's not getting the proper amount of expansion gap around the edges and stuff like that. And if it is separating, uh, thank you, Jared. I appreciate that. And if your LVP is separating, um, it could have been installed where the little lips or whatever maybe got broke off during installation or something like that Or your floor has too much moving in it, movement in it and it's causing it to wiggle this much when you're walking on it and just breaking it apart So that's a couple things or three things that could be the problem with it It's really had to just dig into the floor to see the actual problem But that might be the cause of what's going on there, buddy There are great inspectors out there that your retailer can hook you up with uh, another thing on that is, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, if you get a lot of sunshine, we put these in businesses where they've got a big glass front and a lot of shunt sunshine will come in and cause issues, so be careful of that. Yeah, uh, Nick from Go Coast Flooring, he actually came to my house in Tucson last year and I gave him some LVP uh, and he took home and he actually installed it outside in California, Sacramento weather. Thank you again, Jared. You guys have been more than generous tonight. I really appreciate all you guys' super chats. He installed it outside on his uh, deck concrete slab there, and it's been in Sacramento weather for over a year, and it barely has any defects whatsoever. So it's really got to be something serious to mess it up. LVP is a really good product. Can I answer that one? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Kristen Wilson right here. Uh, go ahead. Read that, Ben. Yeah, um, Kristen Wright said the biggest problem working for CFI in Kentucky uh, is quality of employees that they hired. Listen. Man, we all struggle with that. It's yeah. like trying to hire a, uh, yeah. a, an associate installer. Uh, yeah. Please uh, help me with that word. Uh, you know, we, we go at it with the best intentions. Every company does. No company wants to go out there and make a bad name for themselves. If it's CFI, if it's whoever it is, uh, these are all good people that want to do good and, and, and make their customers happy. Uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, one or two bad apples go out there and do a job and uh, you know they don't they don't look at channels like this one. They don't look at CFI to get trained. Uh, you know, so it's unfortunate, and sometimes they fool us. Uh, you know, yeah. we we do the best screening and vetting we probably possibly can, but you know they get yeah. by us sometimes. So yeah. uh, I wouldn't uh, count CFI out. They're great people. I've met them. Uh, good owners. Uh, good good people to know. Yeah, uh, I, I've been through. I don't know how many um, helpers in my career, and it is definitely hard to find good help so if you're looking at a company that has 50 in 50 cities across the across the nation you can imagine 50 different um, uh, companies or whatever like that it's all one company but 50 different locations how many bad employees they're going to get when I've been one person how many I've been through in my career so it's definitely relative when you figure it and think about it like that so uh, maybe that'll shed some light on it there. Yeah, you got to look a little deeper. Go back to when they were founded and how long they've been in business. I mean, yeah. In our case, uh, our, our, our founder uh, started our business in 1974 and uh, been going strong ever since. So, um, you know, that means the preponderance of what we do is, is pretty good quality. Uh, uh, you're welcome there, Doberman. Let's see here. Thanks for answering. You guys are great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, what's going on? I love the videos. I'm in Jersey, the floor mechanic. We are needing 
needing for these upcoming installs. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. And there's quite a people calling out Cody there. I'll let you be, I guess. Let the other installers there call you out. <laughs> uh, Cody left the room. Hello, everyone. How's it going, Sean? Thanks for joining, buddy. Uh, Jared Hawkins absolutely don't see the future of what's coming and stuck in their old ways. Yeah, I exactly. I completely agree with that. You always got, I've, I've stressed this before, you can't never say this is the way it is and put a period behind it, okay? Because everything is always evolving. You can say this is the best way to do it, comma, and always allow for something else to evolve and something else to improve and stuff like that. So definitely can't put a period behind anything if you're saying this is the best way it is, okay? So a um, couple bad apples. Be frank, 90% of the I'll take that one if it's okay. Go for it. Uh, you know, I, I feel you. you. You get you get a couple or, you know, um, I, I try not to put everybody in a bucket. A lot of people say you can't find young people that want to work. And uh, I wrote an article on uh, LinkedIn about that. Uh, we actually started a school where we worked with Goodwill at our company uh, for people that had never installed before. And we took them from ground zero, knowing nothing. And in like six months, we had them out there doing their first job. Now it's 30, That's 40 awesome. yards a day. Yeah. Uh, and, and these people didn't have a future, but uh, man, these young folks worked really, really hard. And you know, we do do drug tests. We do background checks. Uh, we, you know, with the brands that we've worked for, we can't send people uh, that have questionable uh, ethics uh, into people's homes. So we have to do that. Um, and I tell you what, we found some great people. So. Uh, I know it's real easy to go to that and say, you know, yeah. they all are terrible, but they're not. You just have yeah. to you have to work really hard and, and keep keep going. That's exactly right. And Christian, I've also noticed just since I've had the channel, I mean, this is a construction type job. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the construction crews are typically rough around the edges and stuff like that. A lot of them do drink. A lot of them do do dope. I definitely agree with that. I've seen it myself for countless amount of years. But anyway... Is that the lizard lip towing? Yeah. The one with the TV show? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Dang, funny. I forgot my, I forgot where I was going with Sorry, that. Sorry, I didn't mean to disrupt that. That's okay. Um, Are you talking about people with drug problems and things yeah. like that? So. Oh yeah. But uh, since I have had the channel, there are a lot of good young people out there. You know, now this is based over the world because I, I got, I'm not saying this to puff nothing up or anything like that, but there are people from all over the world that watch this channel and there are people seeking to do better in their daily job. So yeah, uh, if you're working in one city, just like I was in Tucson, there was a whole bunch of bad looking jobs, crappy looking jobs that people just throw stuff together. But looking at it as a whole, there are a lot of good installers that come here and commu communicate on this channel. So there is good people out there, good installers. Thank you, Cody. Hello, did anyone donate? Yeah, Cody, uh, you've been called out for a hundred bucks. Nick uh, from Go Coast Flooring um, donated a hundred bucks. Um, so limited in, limiting, bleh, limiting it to your store or to your little town or whatever like that. And I can, I can absolutely see where you're coming from because there's a lot of people out there that do do that. However, worldwide, there is a group of good people out there. And um, I just met 200 more of them this past week at the CFI absolutely. Convention. Absolutely. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, I wanna, I'm gonna take two seconds, if you don't mind, and thank Jim and Jane Walker for having the vision to bring carpet installers and floor covering installers at large together uh, for over 25 years uh, yeah. to talk about best practices, to share those, to connect us as installers to uh, the retail people who are looking for installers okay. and to mills who are looking for installers. So thank you to Jim and Jane and thank you to the World Floor Covering Association for carrying that brand on. It's just, uh, it's just been amazing and we had a, a great convention last uh, last week. Absolutely. So. Uh, hey, Jesus uh, Car Cardenas, I hope I said your name right. Uh, my carpet knife of preference is definitely going to be the Orcon Action Knife. Uh, the blue one, because it does have that little bit of a rubbery, good feel to it. It just feels good in your hand. And that's what I have used my entire career. I've never even, actually, whenever I first started, I think I was using the, the red one that has the little hook thing on top of it right there. That's when I was uh, a helper working underneath of someone else. But my, my adult 
whole career I have used an Oricon Axe and Knife, so that is the best carpet knife in my opinion, okay? See a question here from Lizard Lick. Uh, sure. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know, maybe if, if you tuned in a few minutes late, we, we broke that down a little earlier about uh, how we uh, pay employee installers and the rates, the base pay uh, changes from market to market. Like I said, there are, like in Seattle right now, uh, the minimum uh, wage is 15 bucks an hour. What our system offers is to take that base wage and double it and triple it with our point system based on how productive the lead installer is. So that's the essence of, uh, we call it PPH, or points per hour. There you go, I wondered what that stand for, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. When you was talking about PPH stuff the other day, I didn't quite get what you was talking about with that, yeah. so. Points per hour. Thank you for saying that. Uh, let's see here, oops, I went too far there. Uh, you're probably gonna read faster than me. You guys know that I only went through the sixth grade, so I'm kinda of slow at reading, so you guys look over me, I'll look up, forgive me for that. Uh, let's see here, I'm just trying to find more questions here to answer. Anthony's uh, highlighting there, Mr. Warwick, thank you again for commenting, uh, that we, we offer both. Uh, he actually happens to have an independent business that works for us and uh, at, at Romanoff, and uh, like I said, one of the greatest installers in our company, literally. I mean, you, you won't believe how much the guy, he directly reports to um, brags on his skills. Uh, but we do offer subcontract in some markets and employee installer uh, as well. Some, in some markets we got both, in some markets we only have one or the other. But you can call up anybody from our website and, and if they're local to you, see what's going on with that. There you go. I thought I'd seen something about a website a while ago. Yeah, I'll, I'll go in after the meeting's over here, uh, after we do this, and I'll, I'll, I'll put some contact for that. Again, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am not, uh, not trying to push uh, any particular brand tonight other than CFI, the organization, the nonprofit organization that trains installers. Yeah. Uh, that's been a big part of my life for 25 years, and what Ruben's doing, sharing information, those two things are going hand in hand. We just got him involved in CFI, and uh, we can't wait to see what happens uh, with uh, both of these entities working together. Yeah. Um, Carpet Man says hi. Hi, Carpet Man. How's it going there, Carpet Man? I appreciate you joining. And Bobby Griffin, I have not tried the wall trimmer. I have I talked to people the other day at the CF CFI convention about that, and they definitely said, yes, that does work. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, I got recruited to carpet installation waiting outside of Menards. That's pretty good right there. I actually, I thought I'd seen a question a while ago where it said, how do you recruit people or something like that? Maybe I was wrong. Did you see anything about that? Somebody said, well said, Ben. Good job there. Thank you, Danny, for that. Daniel Sherman. Yeah, let me uh, say hi to Danny. Danny's sure. got a great installation business. Uh, he's he's always hiring us. He does a lot of commercial. Uh, Danny's a CFI brother, and good to see you on here, Danny. Thanks for coming on and supporting, yeah. uh, and hanging out with me and uh, Ruben tonight. Uh, so he's also based out of Atlanta. Uh, does commercial work. Uh, Danny, uh, Meg's Interiors. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, Meg's Interiors is the name of his company. Uh, so uh, you know, Danny, if you want to post how to get in touch with you, brother, uh, let everybody know. Yeah. yeah he does great commercial fine. work. Be just fine. And when he said Danny, I actually just realized who you were. Thanks for joining, Danny. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you have healed up really well. <laughs> I hope you're able to at least we, back we'll, to work. We'll share that story. Now. I hope you're at least back to work. Uh, I'm gonna scroll on down here and see uh, if we got any more questions here. Uh, so the helper right here. You want you want to answer that? What does it say? Uh, right here. So the helper will get the points or the lead installer gets the so points. just the lead installer gets the points right they, they're the ones who can double and triple that base uh, base <laughs> hourly rate um, the reason we do that is because we want that um, associate installer uh, to aspire to be a lead installer so uh, here's here's what here's what the associate installer getting or some, as many of you call them uh, helpers what they get is they get training and get paid whatever that base rate is in that market. It may be 10, it may be 12, it may be 15. Again, that's dictated by local uh, state laws. Uh, we're typically above minimum wage, but 
I mean, where else can you go to school and work with a craftsman, yeah. learn that trade, and get paid, and have health insurance, and have all the other things that go along with being uh, being employed, paid vacations, all that exactly. stuff. Uh, that's what he gets out of it, and then he starts right. being able to triple his salary. Typically, when we graduate a a, a new uh, an, a installer associate. Um, they don't go out making doing a hundred yards a day. They're thirty, yeah. forty, fifty, uh, and they're barely still making above uh, what they have. But every week, I mean, once they go on, it grows really fast. Every week, they get faster and faster uh, at, at their craft. So, and that's how they start doubling and tripling there. So it goes, like I said, hand in hand. And we also compensate the installer for trading down to. Uh, I hate the word down, but trading to a new in recruit because he's going to have to spend more time with that person. So yeah. um, in, in that case, we're going to compensate the lead installer uh, even over above his points. Uh, we do that quite often. So uh, one great thing about that, you can spend $100,000 on a co uh, college, uh, uh, degree, yeah. college degree or to get schooling or something like that and work a part-time job to to pay your bills and stuff going through that or you can just start right off making money and learn a good trade all at once. I was just telling my guy that the other day. I mean, it's it's basically like getting paid to go to school. It's getting paid to go yeah, to college. You're, you're in you're, trade school, man. You're yeah. learning a great a great career. Absolutely. Listen, it's hard work and it's not for everybody. Yeah. You know, if if uh you know, you need air conditioner 100% of the time, 100% of the day, you know, uh, it, it's not going to be for you. But uh, with floor covering, actually, we get a lot more of that than many of the other trades, right? Where, you know, like heat and air guys have to crawl under houses, got roofers on roofs. You know, we do have heat in the winter and, you know, and some air conditioner in the in the summer, um, you know, to your liking. So it is more of a controlled climate than a lot of trades out there. But it's hard work. It's heavy lifting. You're moving yeah. furniture. Um, you know, you're pulling up things that have been stuck to the floor for years. So uh, it is um, not for the lighthearted. So. Yeah. But you do learn to work smart over uh, brawn as it, the years it, go on. Exactly. Uh, I just seen a thing a while ago. Uh, uh, Cody said, uh, are you mad at me? Uh, we're not mad at you, but it definitely was not a good thing to do, okay? If you're going to put something on here, this is a group of honest individuals that are on this channel, okay? If you're going to put something on here, you need to hand up to your end of the bargain. It's not me. I don't care about the money, but you caused someone else to fork out $100 thinking that they was going to get matched. That was not right, Cody, okay? I just wanted to put that in there. Hey, Cody, I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up on your CFI certified as a, as a scam there. Um, man, a lot of people believe that, and until you go and experience it, uh, it's really easy to think that. Um, you know, it's it, it, it may seem that way at first, but, you know, it's like Ruben. He had never been, and I think what he found was a brotherhood of people yeah. Uh, they, they just have the same struggles he has every day. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a collection of people come together to share the best practices. Yeah. And nobody acts like they're better than anybody else. We work really hard exactly. not to put that out there. So, uh, but you, you have a right to make your um, make your voice heard here. We appreciate yeah. your feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of good friends feel the same way. Uh, Sean Muller is asking about the website for Romanoff. Um, okay, um, I'll come on here at the end and I'll put uh, a number that you guys can call. I'll give it to you real quick. I don't know if you can write it down while we're doing that on there, but it's yep. www. Here you go, right here. All right. You're I'll faster at typing than me. I'll give you guys something to. Right here. He's going to type it in here, the website uh, for you, Sean. He's a lot faster at typing than I am. You guys know I'm slow about everything. So uh, that should be it. There um, you go. Hopefully I got it up there. Yeah, that's right. There. Um, but when you go when you go to that look for locations, each location has the um, the local manager listed there. Uh, I happen to be a regional manager uh, for uh, Alabama, um, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Middle Tennessee. Um, so reach out to us. But again, uh, don't discount guys like Danny. Danny's got a great business too. He's yeah. always looking for good people to work with him and partner with him. Uh, we're looking for people with great businesses uh, that want, you know, you know, a lot of work, do quality work, that sort of thing. So uh, let me be fair, there is a background check, so make sure um, you're at least aware of that. I'm sure anybody on this channel uh, looking to be more knowledgeable in their craft is going to not have a problem. So, uh, Jared, you're asking if some, oh, are you CFI? 
certified as well. I'm not sure who you're talking about there. I don't have any certifications if you're talking about me, but like I said on my other one, that is going to change because I definitely want to be involved in this. It's a great group of people. Excellent. You know, I love what somebody said. You don't have to be certified to be a great installer. That's enough. exactly right. And, and Ruben uh, is, a, is a perfect example. I happen to be, I got certified uh, many years ago. I've been certified for 25 years. I reached the level of master uh, certified installer. Of course, right after I got all that, I kind of moved into management, uh, but I've stayed as a part of the organization because, uh, you know, I went around and I, and I helped train uh, people. Uh, I volunteered. Uh, the trainers for CFI um, when I was a part of uh, growing, just like Danny Sherman, uh, who spoke here just a moment ago. He's a certified master installer. Uh, and we, we flew all over the country. The organization uh, paid for us to go. We didn't get paid for that. We did it because we love this craft and we love sharing. There you go. Not stuff that we know or we're experts, but just stuff that other people showed us. I'm, yeah. I'm going to try to show one here tonight, uh, hopefully in a few minutes, yeah. um, that, that, listen, somebody else showed me. You know, and it's not something I, 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 man, I tell you what, I thought I was a great installer. I power stretched everything. And then I went to get uh, CFI certified, I went to a certified class and I was like, man, there's a lot of things I'm not doing right. So I embraced that and wanted more knowledge and I love to learn. I, I just, and I think that's what Ruben likes too. Yeah, exactly. Nick, you didn't have to do that, buddy. I appreciate it. I promise it wasn't about the money why I said that. It was just poor more out, more, uh, poor morals to set somebody up like that, okay? It definitely was not about the money, but thank you, I appreciate that, okay? Anthony, no, you can't go to Boise, man. We need you there. <laughs> uh, you can go anywhere that. you like, man. You got your own business, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, hey, Zeus, uh, are you talking, do you work for Romanoff? Is that what you said is your um, best job you ever had? Is that what you're talking about, or just been an uh, installer in general? I'm not sure what you're talking about right there. Uh, if you're talking to me, I, I'm, I'm an employee of Romanov now. I was a, a contractor in the first 10 years of my career, but I've been a manager at Romanov. Uh, it, everybody has a different experience. Um, I, he does not, Ruben does not work for Romanov. This is not a Romanov commercial. I'm nope. only answering questions. Exactly. Again, you got Danny Sherman on here uh, who runs a great um, business called Meg's Interiors in Atlanta. Uh, Dave Garden's got a great business that does big, big box work up in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, there's lots of people working. What I'm here tonight is share information uh, and uh, expound on the PPH program um, that he shared in a couple of earlier posts. Yeah, and it says right, uh, uh, the real code, he said, uh, certified ain't nothing but paper. I got There's people on here that live up in Idaho and stuff like that, and they say most of their jobs they can't even get on unless they are certified. So. It pretty much depends on where you live, where the, I think that's gonna come important, because I myself have never been asked, am I certified to get on a job? I've never had to do that, but there is places where you definitely have to be certified to get on a job. And if you was to do something big, say a theater, a mall, or something like that, you're definitely gonna to have to be certified in order to do that. So I can guarantee you, if you wanna get up in the big world of installation, you're definitely gonna to have to be certified. Hey, so I installed for years, I installed for years and years, and one of the things uh, CFI teaches you on is uh, the, the OSHA laws, right? Uh, yeah. That's part of our federal government. I installed for years and years and years, and no, I had nobody, I never saw an OSHA official until yeah. that one time, <laughs> right? And, and it turns out I'm working in a house where the guy's wife works for OSHA, and I'm, I, he tells me that. I'm running around finding all my cords and have the ground wire tore off because those are $7,000 fines, guys. That's what we teach at CFI is yeah. how to run your business and be safe. We also teach technique. We also learn technique from people. Exactly. You're absolutely right. It's nothing but a piece of paper. CFI is no more than what you put into it. That's, that, there you that, go. That's the truest statement that anybody will ever tell you. You'll get into out of it what you put into it. There you go. That's very well said. Uh, somebody says right here, Henry Torres, uh, does it work for hard surfaces? Are you talking about the PPH program? If you are, you can uh, say yes or no on that, and we'll get to that. CFS is not a scam. Yes, it is expensive. However, within five weeks, you can learn the trade right. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate you saying that, buddy. Yeah, CFI itself has a training class that you can go to, uh, and that's probably one of their more expensive offerings. It's like 5K. It only costs $4.99 to become a certified installer. They go in there, they look at your skills, they offer you some uh, tips, 
uh, and $4.99 you can be certified. You do have to pass a written test. They give you all the study material up front. Uh, so yeah, it's it, 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 the 5,000, if it's somebody wanted to go, it's basically a five week trade school and you will come out of there being able to strip, pad, make seams, do steps. It's a great school. They do it down in Texas. They've got go. some mobile versions. Uh, so if somebody is looking at this trade to get into it, that's a great way in. And I'm telling you, uh, my daughter just went to law school and it, it, there's not a $5,000 deficit on that. I promise you. There you go. Thank you, Solo. I appreciate that comment. That's that's awesome. That's what this channel is all about. Like he said, they're sharing information and helping you guys make a better living. Uh, easier, make it, it's definitely hard work, but this channel is definitely about making it as easy as possible. Just sharing what little bit I've learned over my career. So thank you for saying that. It definitely feels good whenever I know that people are benefiting. So again, thank you. And learning too. We're learning from you guys. Too. Yeah, absolutely. I've never had a student that I didn't learn from. Yeah, exactly. Right here, somebody says something about Romanoff. You want to check that? say does Romanoff pay the associate installer or does delete no uh, that's a, Romanoff the in our PPH program the helper is paid for everything the the lead installer doesn't pay for anything other than their own taxes there you go Sean Moore made a good point right there I appreciate you putting that up there Sean being certified means a ton in this business because if you have issues you have backup good point right there absolutely they, yep. they, they always offer if you're out on a big job and you're seeing something you've never seen before yeah uh, you want to call and talk to some experts man they'll put it to you right there Boom. it's the there best hotline you can ever have there you go and you don't even have to call CFI. If you, let's say you call up CFI and the line's busy you can call Danny Sherman you can call me we put we, you know we get to know each other it's not just this big corporate entity that just took your money and yeah and they 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 will follow you through the rest of your career they have mine uh, I, I, guys I didn't go to college you know my college and my learning came through my networking with CFI and you know it helped me throughout my career my management career uh, it's really helped me grow again you get out of it what you put in it there you go good good answer thank you uh, it's a brotherhood. There you go. Thank you, uh, Danny. I appreciate you saying that. CFI is not just not just about certification. It's a brotherhood of uh, co-edge knowledge. Oh. Knowledge. Oh. That's all right. Yeah, sorry. He, he, he left out a letter there. Sorry, so. sorry about that. But he's exactly right, right there. It's it's a really really good group of people. I, I, the video I did on the CFI, good or bad, you guys will just have to watch that. Somebody said I was just hyped up from the trip coming back and stuff like that that's true but i'm still hyped up and i'm going to stay hyped it's two up weeks later because right? it's a good it is a really good experience and just unlimited amount of knowledge when you get around 200 plus other carpet installers and talk just like we're doing here over the over the internet here we do this in a big room just sitting around talking chatting sharing information back and forth and we've got we, it believe it or great. not uh, the organization has legal representation that lobbies for carpet installers and carpet stores and carpet mill including us good, good. they lobby for us because sometimes regulations can be put down so hard we can't even move to do our jobs but yeah. we've got a lobby representative he was there this week talking about you know what it's like uh, what was his class it was about um who are you talking about um jeff the 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 attorney for uh that represents the cfi was there talking about uh, what are the rules in uh, working at a shop where states now marijuana is legal? Oh yeah. Right. So yeah. he was sharing that with them, and so the knowledge that's shared there. I mean, it's 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 mostly floor covering, but it it jumps yeah. the gamut in like how to run your business, best practices, yeah. things like that. So it's a great organization for everybody, quite frankly. And and they are uh, now uh, it's it's the umbrella organization over it is the world floor covering association so if you're a retailer or somebody else who wants to be a part of that that kind of knowledge and sharing man it just kind of all comes together it's really good uh there is a couple people on here that are uh uh still enlisted in the romanoff thing and are certified and jared i want to i want to tell you thank you for backing everything up what's been said all these absolutely's that jared hawkins is putting up there is coming from experience you guys he is an installer i hope it's okay that i say this jared and he actually showed me his romanoff badge the other day where he does keep himself enrolled and enlisted in it every year even though he is not currently working for them at, at, at this point in time yeah. but he does keep it annually so that he can 
always have something to fall hey, back on. It, it, it us, and I know Danny feels the same way. Again, it's not a Romanoff commercial. Just happens to be <laughs> who I work for. I'm here to support. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to support Ruben. But you know, listen, we don't want to be your only option. Just make us one of them. You know, just, just yeah. consider us. And for that matter, uh, maybe we're not in your area. Call up. If you're interested in how yep. the big box and the volume that big box offers, call up your Lowe's, call up your Home Depot, ask them who does, yep. uh, who's your service provider. They'll tell you, yeah. and that's how you find out how to get on uh, with a place that is doing that. But um, there, there's a lot of great um, um, sole proprietors out there uh, that do fantastic work, uh, higher end stuff, and uh, or commercial. It's I got an uncle's got a great shop in in Georgia. Uh, Cherokee floor covering. I hope you don't mind me throwing that out there, but uh, it's a great shop. They do great work. Been there, 30, you know, thirty plus years. So, uh, again, I'm putting out all these brands out there and all these names because I want you guys to know this is about sharing information. Yeah, it's not about plugging. Yeah. Uh, Walter Butler says he's in Alabama. I think you said that there was a Roman off there. Yeah, three. You got Birmingham. You got was, Auburn. And, he was and, asking the other day on the other video. So yeah. there you go. I hope that helps you out, buddy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we got Birmingham, Huntsville, and Auburn. I just need to renew my background check. LOL. It's been over a year. Well, there you go. Happy to have you come back, brother. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Here's what should have been match. Great video, you guys. I'm out. Well, thank you, Nick. I, I don't know if you've been here. Hey, Nick, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, you, you picked a great uh, program to support. Uh, this is so much needed in our industry. Uh, I'm, I'm as pumped about blowing up this website uh, as I am about CFI because, again, I'm passionate about you know sharing our knowledge and having a vehicle like YouTube. I, I never thought about it. We should have done it years ago, but you know, Ruben just making it happen. Uh, Cody says uh, Romanoff University will pay your pay you a little over minimum wage and keep the profits. Have you not heard anything that's been said throughout this 46 minutes and 30 seconds? That's just complete non it's nonsense. Not, it's not for everybody. That's yeah. okay. We, yeah. we understand. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are success stories. There are people that have come and tried it and most of them are just find out that floor covering is just not their bag. Yeah, so. it's definitely hard work. Uh, Christian, I'm sorry that the video is lagging. I don't know what the deal is with that. Sorry about that. Uh, let me work for GoCo. Seems like you got that. <laughs> yeah, he does that. Like I told the other day, I won't say what, but he does charge higher than any installer I ever said. And because he does work for himself, he sells his own jobs. He's an extremely hard worker and he is capable of charging whatever he wants because he does good work and people will pay it. So if you got the experience and you do a good job. Um, well, we're coming up on an hour here. Yeah. Uh, let's see, not you, Ruben, was asking if the gentleman was, thank you, you just answered my question. Okay, he was asking if he was CFI certified. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, he is. I think he said he was a, a, a master installer, so he went all the way to the top. Now they did get the master two is here since he has been uh, out of installing, so he said he did not get that. Yeah, I've got. they've got one more level that I don't have. I think Mr. Sherman may have it that was on here earlier. Yeah, I think I've seen it on his card that he gave me. I think he is a Master 2 installer. We've got quite a few. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to cause trouble here in the live chat. Chill, bro, and sit back and listen and learn. Thank you, Sean. Dang, I went too far. Sorry about that, you guys. Um... Just looking at these questions here real quick. Sorry for the silence here. Uh, uh, big commercial and military, you need your R2C2 certification. Thank you for sharing that, Danny. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, right there you go. For big commercial jobs and military jobs, you do need to be certified. So there you go. That's what I was... Yeah, some manufacturers out there are requiring it too. Yeah. So Danny's spot on. Uh, Christian uh, spoke about Kelly Huddleston. Love Kelly, great guy, and uh, yeah, he probably would say something like that. We'll just <laughs> we'll just own that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just own that. So uh, let's see here. Uh, five, so it's five thousand. Is it cheaper than college or any school loans? You're exactly right. Five thousand dollars is definitely cheaper. You, you're not going to go to you're not going to go like I said and uh, 
Well, I don't know of any other thing that you can uh, just pick up and learn uh, without spending tons of money to learn something that will give you the um, wealth and stuff like that in, in a career such as this right here. You know, you're not going to be... There are lots of rich people out there in this trade, but you got to be way up in there. But even just the middle, man, you know what I'm saying? You can definitely live comfortable, provide a good family for your wife and kids and grandkids doing this trade without going way above and beyond your means. You don't have to run 25 crews or nothing like that. I myself have been one man and one other, one other guy with me. I live a comfortable life. I'm not bragging. I just live a comfortable life, okay? So... Hey, I started really young. My father was yeah. in the trade. Uh, he would be one of the guys on here saying, uh, I don't know about this whole CFI thing. Uh, he, you know, he'd been in it many, many years when CFI came. But he did go get certified with me, and uh, you know, we had a good time doing that. It was one of the greatest things I ever got to do with my dad. But uh, um, good stuff. I bought my first house after you know he started me at 17 years old. I bought my first house at 22. Uh, you know, I had a family going. So uh, if you're young and looking for a skilled trade, uh, it's definitely uh, can pay the bills, um, and right now, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you, there's a shortage of people to do this. So, um, and there's uh, and carpet installers, uh, specifically carpet installers, are in high demand. But um, somebody asked, I thought I saw the question earlier. Do they do they have these certifications for wood installers, or oh, maybe yeah. be with the PPH? Yes, yeah. they cover everything, ceramic, everything. Thank you for answering that. I've seen that, and I went past it without even thinking about it. Yep. Uh, that's not true about Mexican here in Wisconsin. We are a lot of white folks like myself installing, charging accordingly. Thank you, Carpet Man. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Carpet Man. I am three generation Mexican. Yeah, well, there, there ain't nothing wrong with that, buddy, at all. Uh, come out to Texas and try to. <laughs> We should all thank these two amazing gentlemen. Yeah, we want to welcome everybody, especially yeah. me. Uh, you know, I actually took the time to learn to speak Spanish, and uh, it's been very helpful with me. So we appreciate everybody, and I uh, want to be open yeah. arms to anybody that considers this trade. Uh, so that's kind of where I fall on that particular subject. Absolutely. Uh, Do it right. You know, be you know, uh, have everything where it's supposed to be, but. Uh, no discrimination here. We've got some. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, we got we got a lot of uh, ladies that have applied and are doing some great work for us. So everybody's welcome. If you can do it, uh, we'll certainly have a conversation with you. Sean Schultz said, "Thank you, Ben. He'll do that the next time he's in a Home Depot." Where's the nearest Romanoff to me? I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, man, we may uh, you know we kind of skipped the middle of the country, unfortunately. But if you call up your local Home Depot uh, or Lowe's or whatever and ask them who their service provider for flooring is, uh, they can lead you towards if, you, if you're interested in that big box um, yeah. opportunity. But you know, get involved with CFI, man, and open up all kind of doors for you. That's what happened to me. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, uh, let's see here. Hey, he also put the website for Romanoff Flooring is here in the comments. If you want to go back, you can click on it. And he said, like, hit search your area or find out the list of where they are and stuff like that. So that might also help you to yeah. find the closest one in your area. Guys, I love the interest, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yeah. Love the interest in the brands. But again, uh, I really want to emphasize, you know, we're, I'm here to support Ruben and, yeah. uh, and CFI mainly. So Yeah. Okay. Can you do something about the point system for LVT and laminate and hardwood? Um, yeah, that's that's been uh, more of a challenge for us. Not gonna, not, I'm just gonna own that. But we are tweaking that uh, constantly. Uh, Troy, uh, one of our teammates, uh, works on that very uh, diligently. And uh, but it, it does have, uh, we do have a point system for hard surface as well. Um, Ruben stepped away. I don't know what aero carpet is. I'm sorry. Sean's got a comment. It looks pretty interesting. Sorry Joe that. asked about aero carpet. Are you familiar with that? Oh yeah, aero carpet. What's the? What, where's it at? Uh, let's uh, see here. Almost to the bottom there. Uh, do you like installing aero harker? I've only done it twice, and the first time was a nightmare. The second time was pretty good. I'm not. I hated it the first time I did it. The second time it was actually pretty good. So, yeah, I'm not totally against it. It definitely is heavier because you got a 60 or 70 ounce carpet with a 10 pound pad attached to the back of it. So, 
you're manhandling if you got a 12 by 16 or something like that you're manhandling a big roll of carpet because like i said it's 10 pound and a 60 70 80 ounce carpet all at once but if you get the hang of it, it is, i've heard people say on here or seen people comment that it takes twice as long and stuff like that once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad really you can go in and out you know you sweep the floor put your tape down lay the carpet out pull the tape off you trim it in and pack it just like you would a regular stretch in so it definitely goes a lot faster you don't see that on my video where i done that the video where i installed the mohawk arrow carpet was the first time i ever installed it um, I learned a lot on my second job so however I didn't video if I ever come across it again as a matter of fact like I said I'm getting closer on my studio I will buy some and I will do a proper installation on that Mohawk arrow because it really is a piece of cake to do so uh, I hope that helps you out there uh, let's see this thing keeps skipping down way too far uh, let's see here uh, Danny corrected us said he is R2C2 hasn't done the master yet so you know you tend to go with what you need what works yeah. for you uh, you know the master certification uh, it, it, most of these guys know how to hand sew uh, so you know Danny's got a niche that he's carved out he's a business owner yeah uh, he's got a, a, quite a few installers working for him they do commercial matter of fact if you check out Danny he is uh, uh, on uh, LinkedIn um, showing off the um, the Taylor uh, removal system with the <laughs> what's that called I don't know what it's um, called, but I've seen it a numerous times. Help us out here, Danny. Post that. We'll, we'll tell everybody to check out your video. Yeah. Great videos. Uh, the ride-on. The, uh, the ride-on ride floor stripper where he's taking up hardwood and stuff like that. I think. The Bronco. That's what it is. The yeah. Taylor Broncos. So he's on that. They got the gas. They got the electric. You got a big job. Uh, so he's, uh, he's actually showing those off on LinkedIn a lot. Let's see here. Hey, congratulations, Jared, on your uh, on your master level. Yes, Good sir. Good job, buddy. Absolutely. He's actually real smart. I've actually learned a lot from him just from talking back and forth over the phone and text messages. And hey, stuff. that's what we're here for, right? So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I remember I was training a guy one time, and I was showing him about stay nailing. Now, here's a student. I'm the teacher, and uh, we're, we're talking about how it'll get a, a bow in it, so you have to push a wrinkle in it. Yeah. And I was telling him, you know, we just take it, just stay nail it. He goes, I got you, I got you. So he pulls over this box, and he's got about... 15 or 20 ice picks in it so he pushes back the bubble takes the ice pick go, boom 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 there you go i was like holy moly that is exactly what i'm talking <laughs> about and i said what a quick way to do it and then he was done it left small holes and he just pulled them back up so that's how that's how we learn man i mean i'm there teaching somebody and they're teaching me back so that's the beauty of cfi <laughs> that's pretty funny sean about treatment going on her own <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, she does she sure does uh, Anthony Wark, I don't know what you uh, uh, put out there. Somebody says, uh, or it says the message was held for review. I do have all my bad words. I have all bad words are blocked or anything like that. So if you have any kind of bad language or anything, it will not show up on the comments. So if you did do something like that, you might have to rephrase your comment or something like that if you want it to show up. Uh, let's see here. Daniel Sherman, Arrow is is for Mohawk if you know how to, it's simple. Yes, you're exactly right. <clears throat> it's all about learning how to work with it. Yeah, that's it. The first time, as a matter of fact, the first time I, I did it, there was a demonstration of it uh, right the day before I installed it. And when I seen the guy doing it, I kind of blowed him off. I was like, this guy don't know what he's talking about. He's trimming and packing a uh, loose leg carpet because you don't tack strip it, you don't do nothing. I was like, this guy's nuts. I went down there and I, on the little display thing, I took my carpet knife and I cut it in, fluffed it up next to the edge and boom, there it was looking good. Well, I wasn't happy with my first job I did. Second job I tried with the guy, showed there in the warehouse and it worked beautiful. And I, there I was again, eating my own words and eating my own thoughts and thinking I knew more than that guy. And there I was, I learning something from somebody else. So can't never, can't never shrug anything off till you try it. You always gotta try it before you say no it's not going to work because i never would have thought that you could trim and pack a carpet that don't get stretched in that just seems like it goes against all reality but it worked i like good house installations incorporated here yeah. i never took the time to get cfi certified he thinks it's a good organization i totally agree with what they stand for 
Hey, that's exactly it. It's uh, it, it's what do they stand for? What does Ruben stand for? Yeah. Uh, sharing, I think, is a great word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It stands for sharing and uh, trading knowledge. Anthony's a great guy. He's a veteran in the trade, and he does excellent work. Yeah. Um, right here in Middle Tennessee, Bobby Griffin, I am getting um, a buck twenty-five, if I ain't mistaken, which is definitely pretty cheap, if you ask me. to keep the leftover tape yeah the tape for mohawk arrow is definitely expensive and you're right it is hypo uh out whatever that word is i don't know how to say it but it is that it's for people that have asthma and stuff like that and um, they will actually give you a discount on it if whenever it's time to re, re redo your carpet they'll come and take it away and haul it off for you and recycle that carpet because it is made out of made out of all recycled carpet so they'll give you a discount on that also for the Mohawk Arrow carpet <clears throat> looking through the comments here again y'all sorry for the pauses I, I usually don't do this usually just rambling on but I'm trying to get to all of these questions tonight that was the whole point of this video is to get to all the questions thank you Danny for sharing that Taylor Tools Bronco is a ride on beast will just tear up hardwood like it's nothing I've seen a handful of his videos since I've met him over there at the CFI conference <clears throat> and it definitely would work great here's a good question for you thought of Triforce stretcher <laughs> no comment you want to uh, go into this uh, demonstration here sure okay so he's gonna uh, if you guys are good on the uh, flooring about or the questions about um, PPH. The PPH and all that stuff right here. He's going to show us about a lining up uh, seam elongation and stuff like that. So I'm going to pick up the camera and I'm going to hold it for him right here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let me let me turn this around here. I'll show you what he's got going on. So well, here we go. So, so every episode I've ever watched, uh, Ruben always leaves you guys with a technical um, tidbit that might help you do your installations. I'm going to show you a really easy one. Uh, if you know what the name of this is, uh, then you've been exposed to some good training. Uh, this is called a dead man, right? It's just a two by, in this case, six. You can make them as big uh, or as small as you want to, uh, but this can help you with several things. One of those is pattern elongation. So if you have a pattern that you're starting off and everything matches up on the first few patterns, and then it starts to run off one side starts to outrun the other by a half inch and then an inch and then a, you know maybe even more in some cases um you're going to want to deal with that uh, you know carpet is a fabric it's a movable fabric you have to manipulate it to get those patterns to match so in this case uh the dead man as we like as we call it at cfi uh it has a, a a bed of tack strip on it all the pins are running the same way and it becomes a stationary wall for you to stretch off to match up your pattern. And uh, Ruben and I just put an example here together tonight. I'm going to show you in just a, just a second how that works. So um, what we're going to do, if, if Ruben can focus in on the carpet laying on his desk, all right? So you want to line the pattern up in the middle first, as we've got here. These two or three stripes here are lining up in the middle. Go ahead and make that seam, make sure it is cooled, okay? Line up the ones that'll line up, and then once you've got those lined up, you can now put in your temporary um, wall, basically is what that is, right? And if that's running long, if you look over here, I've got the right side running long. Now imagine you gotta start in the center, and the right side's running long, so now I can take and put my power stretcher here and have my associate installer hold this firm, stand on it, kneel on it, whatever it takes, and then I can stretch this until the pattern matches on one side. The problem here is called pattern elongation, okay? So once you stretch it and they start to line up, you nail it. You might have to move it forward again and keep working all the way down. Get that seam nailed off and ready and get that pattern lined off. You should start from the middle. Because if you start down here at the end, folks, and get these lined up, that problem's gonna get longer and longer and longer. By starting in the middle, you cut the problem in half on both sides. And now you can work both directions and lining up that pattern. Let's say you do a job and you just couldn't get the pattern lined up, but an inspector comes out, 
they're going to know right away whether you started in the center and they're going to know right away whether you knew what you were doing and, and how to match a pattern. If you started in the center and you still got trouble both ways and you've documented that you were uh, whatever the standards for that mill is, some say it's an inch, uh, but each mill has their own, uh, but they will be able to tell that you started in the center. So you want to make sure uh, that you do that and then use that dead man. That's what we call it as a dead man. Okay. <clears throat> So we'll take a few questions about that maybe. Yeah, I've, I've never myself used a dead man. I've always myself, that's a great idea. I've, I've, when he showed me that earlier, I was like, that's awesome. Uh, like I said, I've never used it. I always have started in the center though, whenever you got a pattern elongation like that, and I'll just work my kicker as I'm going and kind of, because if you bump your kicker a little bit, naturally it's going to stretch all of it that way too. But this is going to be definitely a much more efficient way than constantly kicking your carpet. Or actually, I would always have Jerry as well. Whenever I would run into this, I would have Jerry or whoever was helping me get on one side and work the kicker as I put it together. This is going to allow you to do it by yourself. And you're using a stretcher rather than a kicker, which is definitely better on the carpet. And your knees. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, another great use for that dead man, and let's say you're doing a mobile home or a modular home, the walls are a little bit thinner. Uh, the pressure on those power stretchers is, is huge. Uh, you can actually put this on the other side and stretch both ways at once. You basically yeah. created a double-headed power stretcher and, and get away without putting any pressure on the walls whatsoever. So it's great for that. Again, you can make them five feet long, three feet long. Uh, boy, I tell you, it makes a big difference. Uh, a big difference in getting rid of uh, pattern elongations. There's also pattern skews. We can unpack that yeah. on a future episode. Uh, there are bows and patterns that this can help you out with. It's a simple, uh, very inexpensive tool to make. Uh, I don't think they actually make any, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, that are pre-packaged, pre-made, but uh, really a great tool to have. Uh, a good way to keep yourself safe is like put a piece of carpet, maybe you know duct tape the end until you get ready to use it and expose those uh, pins. So, because uh, I tell you, you will get off of those a lot quicker if you get on them. Yeah, I like what Danny said right here. If you got a, a room that's too big for your carpet poles to reach, which I always keep an extra set of poles, but if your carpet poles are not long enough to reach a room, place that uh, dead man right there in the center of your room and stretch it both ways. I, I have done that yep. in uh, long upstairs bonus rooms, but what I actually did was just nail through the carpet and uh, into the subfloor and stretch both yeah, ways. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, because you'd have to secure it in the middle to be able to work all the way around it like right. that. So that's, yeah. that's a good point, but uh, just a simple tool, man, that could help a uh, floor covering installer be more of a professional. Great to use in the trailers instead of yeah there you go Nick good uh, great to use the trailers instead of stinger stinger is an absolute hey I'm gonna tell you I'll share a story with you <laughs> we, we got a customer that uh, unfortunately one of our installers used a stinger on two years ago uh, but now um, they've determined that they got allergies to carpet and they knew that they had hardwood underneath their flooring that we put down for them they took it up and guess what we got a stinger dig every 18 inches uh, where somebody used that. Uh, that tool is not for the professional. Sorry, I'll be the guy that tells everybody and yeah. I'll take the heat for it. Uh, <laughs> it's not for the professional. It, Absolutely if you want to be, If you want to be quick, I like the aluminum lightweight tubes that stretch yeah. out to 10 feet. Uh, they're great, easy to carry around, uh, but that spike, man, it just, uh, you know, unless you're going to seal every little hole you put in there. <laughs> uh, sorry, I know this is a, a big debatable thing, so yeah. uh, I appreciate uh, everybody's different perspectives on that. I personally would uh, not do that to my customers. Go Coast Florence says, thank you, Ben. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that too. Um, um, Sean Moore, I have not heard of a seam mate. I sure ain't, buddy. Have you ever heard of that man always using the nails, but like it thinks for me, love to learn. There you go. That's what it's about, Bobby Griffin. That's what this whole channel's about. It's loving to learn. Absolutely. So. You know, we'll, uh, Ruben, you, he, he lived in Arizona when I first met him. Yep. So uh, I, I live up the road a piece now. He moved to the um, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee area, and uh, <laughs> about, an hour, about an hour from me. So uh, maybe we can do some future collaborations. But yep. um, I'm going to try to get him hooked up with a lot of different guys from CFI because I got this. I, I, I didn't make this up, folks. I learned this at CFI, guys training me and uh, sharing their information. So... I, I'm definitely not the smartest guy, uh, probably even in the room. So, 
Carpet man, a stinger is a little hook that actually goes on the headpiece of your stretcher that pokes down in the carpet, through the carpet, and digs into the subfloor. So it's like a spike that will go through, punches a hole in your carpet, and digs into the wood subfloor and allows you to stretch that way. So even just hearing that, you can only imagine. It's definitely, it's it's not for a professional. So. I tell you, get off those tack strips a lot quicker to get on them. But anyway, it kind of looks like that, folks. That's that. It, it digs down pressure. through the carpet, digs into the subfloor. I don't think the it carpet right. Scoot a little closer there. The carpet rides up on it on that stinger. So this is the hook that goes through the carpet into the subfloor right there. For those that did not know anything about that, I am sorry that I'm showing you this right now. <laughs> it's more than fine that you didn't know nothing about it. You, yeah. you don't need it, I promise. I've been doing it almost 30 years, and I've never never even owned one so you don't need it to to install carpet by no means a door jam seam cutter uh let's see oh i think i know what he's talking about it's like a it's like a vertical razor and you lay the carpet over and you tap the top of it and it scores the back i think that's what he's talking about um i've seen those yeah oh yeah always found it made my seam a little more crowded than i like right okay I'm a row run guy when I can yeah, on the link stuff. Absolutely. But I've seen people use that on their cross seams. Uh, don't hate it, but uh, yeah. again, I always found it made my seams a little uh, a little more crowded than I like. Doug Baker says, love using the seam mate. I would like to know what it is. I must have missed your comment where it was or something there, Sean. Oh, definitely messed the floor up underneath. Oh yeah, I hear you. Sean, could agree with you more, buddy. But you know what? I hate, I hate to disparage anybody. Some people, that's all they've been shown. If we yeah. can get them in a group like this yeah. and show them the logic behind yeah. what, why it doesn't work. Um, well, why it doesn't work good. properly. Yeah. You can stretch. I've actually seen a guy stretch, and he was showing me how it would stretch in a hallway, and he actually stretched it so much that he pulled his cuts off where it went over the steps and stuff like that. So it will stretch, but it is going to damage your carpet. So It's, it's my understanding they made that for when they bring uh, the two halves of a modular home together. Oh. They got that seam to, to, to do. So, and you know, they build the walls on top of the carpet and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, a crab stretcher would work better. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, that's my understanding how what the origin of that was. Okay. Um, any more questions here? We've actually been on for 71 minutes and 56 seconds. You guys were super awesome tonight. Um, I really, really do appreciate all the super chats, all the donations, uh, everybody for joining in. We've got, we still have 25 people sitting on here with us. Uh, really appreciate all you guys um, joining in. I've never seen a lot of jobs. <laughs> I've actually seen that double stinger. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, Twi yeah. Twice the mess. Twice yeah. the mess. I, I seen it on a site the other day for sales, as a matter of fact. Thank you, Jared, once again, buddy. I really do appreciate all of your all of your feedback, all of your joining. Uh, thanks, Danny, for that. Hack you later. <laughs> all right, Christian, double stinger. Yeah, they actually make one of those that hooks in that has two spikes come out so instead of one. Uh, here in New York City, we install lots of carpet on walls. I've only done one like that, and it was just here the other day, and it was actually called wall carpet. It wasn't a regular carpet or anything like that. It was literally called wall carpet, and it was real thin, had the little ribs in it and stuff like that. What I did is I used a heavy-duty uh, wallpaper glue, and I painted it on with a paintbrush, and it worked really well. I actually did a, a little bit of a live stream right there if you want to go see it. It's called Carpet on the Walls with a question mark behind it where I done that job just the other day in a home theater system or somebody's home theater. <clears throat> and the way I grew up was with a power stretcher and knee carrier. That was me too, Sean. Same here, brother. You can still buy the blades for the same make. Okay. Uh, somebody's asking you where there. Just do it right once. Yeah, there you go. I, I agree. Nick, square blades and round blades. My crane power stretcher, first small rooms, push carpet. Tell it on yourself, Jose. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, guys. <clears throat> I appreciate you joining in. Like I said, it's been uh, well over an hour here. Really, really do appreciate all you guys for hanging out and all your super chats. Hold on, I wanna 
<clears throat> I want to point this out. This is the most uh, uh, anybody has ever donated on this, Nick. That was the absolutely knocking it out of the park with that $100 super chat there and the other $50 super chat and all that stuff. I want to give you guys a total. I'm showing right now that $238 has been uh, contributed to the channel for all of this. And um, I really do appreciate it. Christian Wilson just said something about the Instabine. Um, if you guys haven't seen that, that is awesome. I actually, before I get off here, I want to let him say something about that. He showed me just a while ago. That would be super awesome for fixing your own steps up and stuff like that. If you don't mind saying something about that. Absolutely. Um, so uh, about 18 years ago, a buddy of mine named Kelly Huddleston um, and <coughs> I came up with an idea called uh, Instabine. Uh, as I was struggling with, you know, my teams would call me in and say, hey, um, I can't uh, I can't turn this. It's a Berber. It's granite on the side or it's too thick. And we're trying to make runners, stair runners. And, and I say, oh, okay, well, just go ahead and stencil it, bring it back. We take it over to the binder. Um, they would uh, bind it. We go back two weeks later. The problem from that with a business standpoint uh, is, and, and for installers too, is you have to go back, right? You have to go back two weeks later, and then the installer's got to interrupt his day by having to go put that stencil carpet on when he could be out doing 100, 150 yards of carpet. Um, so uh, Kelly and I were just chatting at a CFI event. So let me uh, brag on CFI again. Uh, we were just chatting, just talking about it, and, uh, and you know, Kelly was listening to me. I think I was talking to a group of 10. He came up in that room that, that night, he said, man, I got an idea. So if, if you want to go check it out, it's basically what we created was a welting um, that you, it's got one side has uh, peel and stick tape on it, and it's made out of traditional binding material. And then we, uh, we sewn a uh, piping into it, it looks just like binding and you put it on the back you watch the video it's so simple uh, you put it on the back uh, here to the back and then you run with the Taylor micro tip um, Danny there's a plug for you uh, the Taylor micro tip to weld that binding to the edge of the carpet uh, you got something that's going to stay there you bound it on site you close out the job that day uh, you make, you know, the installer can make a couple of bucks, be done with the job all in one day. Uh, I don't own it anymore, folks. I got it started. Kelly and I sold it to a company called Bond Products out of Pennsylvania. Great guy there. Um, his name is Brian Milnes, owns the company. They actually sell sewing machines there, and their family's been in business, I think, since 1942, making uh, binding, uh, you know, the, the strips that we all use for binding every day. <clears throat> So check it out at bond.com or instabind.com. The video will come up. There's an old YouTube. Still got my, you know, hands on the uh, on doing it, and, uh, and I recognize an old watch I had more than 10 years. I was just uh, going over it with uh, Ruben just a few minutes ago. But uh, kind of a you know niche little product that can help you get your jobs done um, when you want to uh, make a nice <clears throat> runner and leave a little hardwood reveal. Okay, we've got lots of thank yous, Ben, for your time. And again, I want to thank you for coming up here. Happy it's, to. It's a, a 30 or 45 minute drive or whatever for Ben to come up here and take a, a he actually <clears throat> got here about an hour and a half, two hours earlier, and we've just been sitting around talking and sharing information and stuff like that, learning off one another. That's what we installers do. That's what we, we do here We built a dead man to show you guys. Yeah, we've done that and um, all that stuff. And, and, and definitely enjoyed his company. Um, everybody is saying thank you and I really appreciate it and Doug Baker thank you again for that super chat I didn't get a chance to you don't don't worry about that a uh, hundred dollars that was like out of the ballpark for Nick to do that nobody's ever done that I yet. can tell you what he's doing with the money man he's investing in nice equipment uh, <laughs> camera equipment to bring this to you better I mean yeah. I'm looking around I'm amazed you know uh, yeah. at what he's doing to bring this to you guys so yeah. it's really cool stuff and, and like I said last night out there looking at my studio, everything that comes in from the channel is going into improving the channel. So all your stuff is going to bring better stuff to you, just like the man said there. So again, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I'm probably going to dream about carpet tonight. <laughs> we all do, man. We kick, yeah. we kick in our sleeps, too. Yeah. Uh, my uh, wife told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Until next time, FBSB is out. Thanks, team.